Okay, day 63, and you've probably been getting a little bit frustrated at this point by the fact that all your code is taking up so many hundreds and hundreds of lines. Well, today, we're going to separate that out and use multiple files. Using multiple files in Python is actually something you've already done, because when you've imported anything, you've imported the code from another file. Now, at the moment, that's another file that somebody else has written, which is great because we get all their testing for free. But what happens when we want to put code in a different file? Well, let's write a very simple program to start with, and then we'll see how we can export that and turn it into a different file. So I've written a very simple program here to count up to 10. And if I run it, it is going to count up to 10. But let's move the code from here to a different file. So what I'm going to do is just copy my code. In fact, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it test.py. It's really important that you do .py there. And what we're going to do is paste the code in there. Now, if I click run, nothing is going to happen. And that's because our run button is programmed to only run the code in main.py. Now, as you advance through learning how to code, and as you advance through using Replit, you'll find that you can customize the behavior of your run button very, very easily by adjusting some hidden files inside your REPL. That's not something we'll cover today, but it is there if you want to go to the documentation and find out how to do it. But if I'm clicking run, there's no code in my main.py. So I need to import that library. I need to import the code I've just written. And the easy way to do that is with the skill we already know. It's import and then the name of the file. Now notice we don't have to put the .py after it. It will look in the folder it's in to find a file with that name. And if I click run, it works. Fantastic. But there's an ever so slight problem with this. And that is that when I click run, it's just going to print the code out. Now, if I wanted some of my other code to work, for instance, if I wanted to print out the word countdown and then the code, well, that's not what's happening. The moment import happens, the computer is just running the code. And that's the big difference here. When you're working with multiple files, you need to think more like a library. Because when we imported random, it didn't immediately spit out a random number. When we imported time, it didn't immediately pause execution for a period of time. No, what it actually did was it imported a bunch of subroutines that later we got to call. So that means in our second file, we need to define this as a subroutine. If I go back to main.py now and click run, well, again, it doesn't run the code. So what's happening? Well, in very much the same way when we first built our subroutine and you think of a subroutine as a recipe, we've basically just put our recipe in a different book and put the book on the shelf. So we need to tell the code to go get that book, which is what the import line does. But now we need to tell it to go and do the recipe. So if I call, test.countdown, then I should get exactly what I need. Now there's one little help here, and it's if you've got a long name for your file, which some of them will have, you can also import things and give them a pseudonym. Give them a name that you'd rather call them by a nickname in modern parlance. If we just add as to the argument when we import something, we can give it a shorter name. So we might want to call it TT, for instance. And then we can refer to it as TT, and it will run just as well. Using a nickname for a library, or in this case, using a nickname for an entire file, means that we can call all those subroutines with relative ease. Common problems then. Well, this is the number one most common problem. And I click run, and I get a crash. And that crash message is something we've seen before. Countdown is not defined. It's saying, you want me to do countdown, but I don't know what that is. And it's a very similar message to what we got when we looked at libraries before. If we try to run a subroutine from a separate file without telling it what file that is, then it's going to get confused because anything without a dot in front of it when we call a subroutine will look in this file, in this main.py. I need to tell it, in this case, 
that I'm using the library I brought in as TT and it will work fine. Here's another common mistake. Now I'm going to show you the code to my test.py. That's not just a subroutine this time, it's got actual executable code. And this is because I based this on a program that I wrote previously. If this was the only piece of code I had, this would be nice. It would say, here's the countdown and print the countdown. The problem I'm going to have is that because in main.py I've called that program, we're going to get a bit of a fun problem. Now, what's happened here is that I've got it twice. Why? Well, import, remember, brings all the code in and executes it. If they're just subroutines, if they're defs, that's a bit like saying, here's the code for the countdown, don't worry about it for now. And the compiler just skips over it. However, any code that's unindented will be executed straight away. So what's happening is I'm printing out the message and running the countdown before we get to me calling it again. You must make sure that any code that you've imported has no code that will run the minute it is imported. Otherwise, you're going to get some problems. Once again, I've broken some code. Please do try and fix that for me. Today's challenge is very, very simple. I want you to go back through your previous programs for the last 62 days. And I want you to find all the subroutines that you think are going to be useful. And you're going to make a library of your most useful subroutines. Maybe your random dice roller program. You've used a lot. Bring it in. Maybe you've got subroutines to deal with lists. Bring those in. Make a separate file that contains all your best subroutines and then in your main.py, import it and use a few of them to show it works. In the real world, programmers tend to maintain one of these files as their own libraries. In fact, sometimes they maintain multiples of these. If you build something good once, you want to be reusing that as much as possible. So you take the code and you stick it in your own library for your own usage as you go. Once you're done, publish it in our community with the hashtag replit 100 days of code so you can get our eyes on it and see how amazing that is. Tomorrow's lesson, we're learning a concept, object oriented programming. Sounds complicated, is actually really, really useful as a way of shortening how much work we have to do when we're building things like video games.